We just watched two videos showing good examples of projectile motion. We know uh, at some level what projectile motion is, right? It's when an object moves through the air. It's the motion of an object through the air when the object is under the influence of just gravity. The projectile is that object that moves under projectile motion. I asked you a question as you were watching the first video, the video of the guy going off of the ramp, flying through the air 100 meters into this pool of water. I said, look at the shape of this path. What's the shape of this path look like from math class? Your hint was, usually in math class, you see it the other way around. Anybody know what shape that is? It's a parabola, yeah. The shape of the path of a projectile, when there's just gravity acting, is always going to be a parabola. When you see the equations that describe it, it might make sense to you why it has to be a parabola. Now, because the bus in the video or because the guy in the video was moving in a parabolic path, the object, whatever it was in the video, experienced two components of motion, an X and a Y. Now, it wasn't straight X and straight Y. It was a combination of X and Y, like those funny angle problems that we've done. But there was still an X and a Y component. Because of that, we need to break these problems up into X components and Y components. The X component, or the horizontal motion, it's constant velocity. Why? Because there's nothing slowing it down or causing it to speed up in the x direction. The only force acting here is gravity, and it's acting down. It'll affect the y component, but not the x. Therefore, when we're analyzing the x component, we're going to use one equation, and always the same equation. Our group A equation, v is equal to delta d over delta t. So when analyzing x, v equals delta d over delta t. The y component, however, experiences acceleration. And why is it acceleration? Because there's a force acting, the force of gravity acting down. As the object is moving through the air, it's constantly being pulled downward and therefore constantly accelerating downward at negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Because of that, we can't use V equals D over T to describe the y component. Rather, for the y component, we're going to have to use one of our acceleration equations. There's five of them, remember. Right? All of those acceleration equations are valid. The one we're going to use most often is this one. D is equal to VIT plus one-half AT squared. So strategically now, when you see one of these problems where an object is undergoing projectile motion, I want you to, first of all, draw a picture. Second of all, break it up into the X components and Y components. Thirdly, make your X component V equals D over T. Make your Y component VIT plus one half AT squared. I'm telling you right now, question number one on your final exam, written response question number one on your final exam is a projectile motion question. You need to start out by drawing a picture, by breaking it up into X and Y, and by writing down these two equations. That's exactly what you're going to do for question number one on your final exam. And if you don't, you're not going to get full marks for it because it's wrong. Best way we can uh, illustrate this is with uh, an example. This is an example uh, 2.10 on page 107 of your textbook. It says, head smashed in buffalo jump near Fort McLeod, Alberta, is a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site. Over 6,000 years ago, the Blackfoot people of the plains hunted North American bison by gathering herds and directing them over uh, 20 meter tall uh, cliffs that are 20 meters tall. Um, simple but brilliant. Okay, bison aren't the smartest animals in the world. Okay, they're rather dumb, in fact. If you get bison together and chase them, then they'll run away. They'll run right over a cliff. So that's what, the, uh, that's what the Blackfoot people figured out. Said, hey, look, we need to kill these bison. We could kill them one at a time by hunting them, or we could send dozens of them over a 20-meter high cliff all at the same time and kill them all at the same time. The key is you better be standing in the right place at the bottom of the cliff because there's a lot of bison coming down over a 20-meter high cliff. This question asks us, if the bison are moving at 18 meters per second, how far from the edge of the cliff are they going to land? In other words, 
where do you not stand? Let's draw a picture. Here's the cliff. The height of the cliff is 20 meters high. The bison The bison's all happy there because he has no idea he's running off the edge of the cliff. That looks like a bison, right? Except for the except for the color. I know it's bison aren't really green, but other than that, it looks like a bison. Runs off the edge of the cliff, and of course, as you know from Wiley e. Coyote cartoons, he runs straight out, looks down, and then falls. Of course, that doesn't really happen, right? Really, he follows a parabolic path. It's more a half a parabola because he's running off the edge of a cliff, but it's still a parabola, right? The question is, where does he land if he runs off at 18 meters per second? All right. I told you guys a few minutes ago, break it down into X components and Y components. X will always, always be this equation because the X component is always constant velocity. V equals delta D over delta T. The Y component is always a group B equation. Any of the group B equations are valid, but this is the one that you're most often going to end up using. So always try this one first because it's far and away the most common one. If it doesn't happen to work for you, then try something else, but it's going to work for you. Now you're going to love this strategy, the brute force strategy. Look at what you got. Get something. Solve for something. We're looking for how far the bison go off the edge of the cliff, but in the end, if you can find something else, I'm happy with that. Don't try to find the variable you're looking for right away. Okay, it'll, it'll come out of the wash. You start plugging numbers in, sooner or later, you'll get what you're looking for. All right, let's start plugging some numbers in. Do we have the value of V here? Remember, that's X component of V. How fast are these bison moving horizontally? Not 18 meters per second. So let's plug that in. Do we know how far these bison go horizontally off the edge of the cliff? No, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? That's what we want to find is how far from the edge of the cliff they end up. We don't know what D is. We don't know what T is either. So that wasn't very helpful. That's okay. Listen, I don't want you to ever panic when you start plugging numbers in here and you can't get anything because you'll get something. It just might take a step or two to get it. Let's go to our Y component. Do we know what delta D is, the displacement in the Y component? Uh, no, no, not 18. Yep. Negative 20 because the bison end up 20 meters below where they started, right? Does that make sense? What about VI for the Y component? How much of that 18 meters per second initial velocity is up and down? Zero. zero. So let's cross that off. Zero times time. I don't know what time is, but zero times whatever time is gives me zero. Equals one half of the vertical acceleration, the up and down acceleration, negative 9.81 times T squared. So let's say negative uh, 20. A half times neg 9.81 is neg 4.905. And now let's solve for T. We're going to say uh, 20 divided by 4.905. And then we're going to square root that. We get a time of 2.0193. Use the unrounded number because it's not a final answer. Is that what I'm looking for? Nope. No, nope, it isn't. What are we going to do with that, though? Remember I said you don't really have, have a strategy other than brute force here. Plug things in, see what happens. I'm fine with the fact that you haven't found what you're looking for. Okay? We've got something that we didn't have before. we got the time. We didn't have that before. Matt, what do you want to do? Plug it into the other one. So we're going to say 18 is equal to the displacement over the time of 2.0193. And then we're going to solve for displacement. See what we get when we do that. 
36 meters, 36.3 meters. How far do the bison go? 36.3 meters. You can see that video that we watched of the guy going down the hill on the water slide and then up the ramp and into the, into the swimming pool. You can see that in the absence of air resistance, it's very predictable where he's going to land, right? As soon as you introduce air resistance, it becomes a bit more of a problem. A hey, quick question for you. You guys have answered something similar for me before. This velocity can't be used over here. This displacement can't be used over here. X and Y are separate. They're independent from each other. Why can I use the time from here over here? Because time's a scalar, right? X, Y, there is no X or Y time. It's just time. There's no direction with it, right? Uh, let's leave you with these three questions on page 107, please. These three questions on page 107.